transform unsustainable healthcare systems into sustainable ones. By equalizing the relationship between medical professionals and patients, and also providing cheaper, faster, and more effective solutions for diseases. Technologies could win the battle for us against cancer, AIDS, or even Ebola, and could simply lead to healthier individuals living in healthier communities. Just like the past revolutions, the fourth industrial revolution is invading our lives, and it's only positive. Innovation has to happen. There are some leaders and believers in the marvels of technology who face change with courage and turn to technologies with an open mind and prepare for the changing world with as much knowledge as possible. Those are two heroes. Dr. Raphael Grossman is a name to be remembered. He's a surgeon, educator, a speaker, and a healthcare futurist. As he is welcoming the future with open arms, as a proud advocate for the adoption of VR, AR, and XR in healthcare. I'm delighted to have Dr. Grossman with us today. Thank you, doctor. Welcome. Okay, well, uh, good day to all. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Grossman. I'm a surgeon. I'm also uh, passionate about uh, the power of technology to uh, improve uh, what we do in healthcare and uh, how we uh, teach and learn healthcare. Uh, I have uh, been always uh, passionate about uh, the power of uh, technology to uh, basically uh, empower us, augment us uh, to uh, do uh, better. Uh, the technology, though, unfortunately, despite all the, uh, the marvelous uh, uh, jumps that we've had uh, in, in regards to, to, uh, to its use, and it's almost uh, like science fiction almost. Technology is not equally uh, shared in the world. Uh, as you know, uh, we have about uh, 5.1 billion people in the world who don't have access uh, to the most basic uh, surgical care, to safe and affordable uh, surgical care, and that is a problem. I think that uh, we must uh, fix that. Uh, as you can see in the numbers, you know, there is about uh, a, a 313 million uh, surgeries that we do every year. Uh, we would need 143 million surgeries every year to improve health and uh, prevent disability. Uh, we know that uh, almost 8% uh, of global deaths are uh, due to a surgical disease. And uh, we have about 4 million deaths that are uh, post-operative death uh, every uh, year. 16.9 uh, million people died from surgical conditions in one year. So this is something that, that we must uh, fix. You know, surgery is an indivisible and indispensable part of, of healthcare. And that's uh, is something that, that moves me on. Um, when I went to Singularity University to the exponential medicine program and I first met the inventor of Google Glass, I thought that a device like Google Glass could really empower us even more, empower us to connect and to communicate better. If you haven't seen Google Glass, it's a fantastic device that uh, sits in your forehead. It's almost like having a laptop and a, a smartphone in your forehead. So it's something that uh, brought uh, to me some ideas on how to use it in, in healthcare. So I used it uh, in the operating room uh, for the first time ever, and that caused a lot of commotion, and that in a way sort of catapulted me to become a, a not just a surgeon full-time, but also a communicator full-time. I created a website, and I'm very active in Twitter and LinkedIn, just trying to bring that message of how technology can empower us, how technology used in a smart fashion can really make us better. If you see uh, these old pictures of my surgical theater, right, and this is pretty much the way it is today, uh, uh, except that that's Surgical theater, it's, uh, it's a little bit the fancier maybe. But um, I thought that, uh, uh, for example, Google Glass could give us a, a first a, a seating, first raw seating uh, uh, to, to a procedure, to learning a procedure. Rather than being in a tangential way, we could have the students, you know, looking from our perspective. And uh, so how we did the surgery was very simple. It was just the idea, I think, of uh, bringing the surgery, the, the, the surgery students remotely to where we are without having to have them you know behind us looking behind our shoulders but not only that not just the perspective of the surgeon but having a 
a digital assistant in a way uh, with us at all time, preventing us from committing an error, from, from making a mistake, uh, reminding us of things that were important to keep in mind when we're trying to, to, uh, uh, to go through uh, uh, the, uh, the, the high stress uh, act of doing surgery, for example. Uh, it's not a new idea, you know, this is a, as you uh, see an uh, old movie, right? The 20, 25 years ago Terminator movie. And uh, you know, we did uh, think about this uh, uh, head mounted displays that would uh, do face recognition and data acquisition. And uh, so uh, uh, this uh, is science fiction, obviously, uh, but it was science fiction. Now, uh, all the science fiction uh, uh, thoughts have become a reality, right? So uh, in the clinic, for example, when we see a patient, we immediately turn our backs to the computer. That is what digital health uh, has become and that uh, this is wrong. You know, we need to have the devices uh, instead empower us to connect with the patients in a better way, to have a more empathetic, direct, eye-to-eye, face-to-face uh, uh, communication with our patients by using the technology in a smart way. So uh, even in rounds, you know, we can be in the fanciest of hospitals, you know, with all the highest technologies and still we use pen and paper to write our little notes and see patients around. So these devices can, uh, you know, make us do with that. This is a, a proof of concept from almost a, a, a seven years ago. My friend uh, Lucian Engelen and his team did it at Radboud University in the Netherlands. But you can see using Google Glass with the a projection on the screen of everything that we need to know about this particular patient. A, 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 let us be more personal, more direct with the patient, even do a teleconsultation. And we're not talking of uh, the times of pandemia. This is, you know, years and years ago, right? So we just need to think differently. You know, health is a basic human right. And the problem is that we don't a, a, a attack health as a basic human right. And that is a problem. A health is a, a dysfunctional. Healthcare is in deep trouble, I think. A, if you see all these uh, statistics, it, it, you know, it, it's terrible that we have all this potential and still the healthcare that we provide in most of the, in the world is, uh, is, uh, is not really uh, up to, to what it should be in, in the year uh, 2020. Uh, I think that the most uh, important problem is uh, the connectivity. Uh, we have lost the human connection and that is why I always uh, try to preach and, and evangelize for a, a healthcare that is human and also humane. I think technology can bring us there. Uh, is uh, thinking differently, is uh, thinking in new ways, right? Innovating. Uh, we talk about uh, disrupting the system, about the creative uh, disruption of the system that Dr. Eric Topol uh, talks about, right? Uh, we have to uh, completely sweep uh, the, 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 the train of thought and uh, use technology in ways to, to, to uh, empower us. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these guys, you know, this is uh, one of the originals uh, in smartphones, not smartphones, but cell phones in the 70s. Marty Cooper invented this, and I had the honor to meet him in a Singularity University Exponential Medicine last year. You know, a phenomenal guy who was telling me the story of, of how he thought of, of this device. And, and we have really seen how this device has changed the way we do, we do uh, anything in the world. Is the natural uh, evolution of the device, right? Uh, we have big computers to smaller, smaller, smaller computers to now computers that fit, you know, in our, in our pockets, right? This is the, 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 the evolution of the technology. And it goes uh, swiftly. We don't even think about it. Uh, we just need to adapt to it in order to use it. Uh, if you see uh, anyone not using a smartphone when they have a minute or two left, you know, that's the person who's the weird. So we are in a, in a sort of a, a, a movement of, of a, a revolution of the smartphone. And you see areas uh, that are very, very remote and they will have connectivity. They will have connectivity by phone or, 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 or by, by screen. Uh, so uh, telehealth, uh, which we're all doing now in the pandemic, is not a new thing and that uh, will get even better. You know, we need to have connectivity. This is a picture of the uh, a Starlink uh, a project in, uh, a, you know, the Elon Musk project uh, uh, to connect the whole world, even the most remote areas with uh, internet uh, connectivity. That is, is something that we need to do. In Maine, where I am, we have this uh, wireless computers and we move around and we connect one patient uh, to the provider or one provider to the provider. And, and this is something that, that it's possible. And, and we were not doing it uh, you know, a few days before the pandemic in a way we should have been doing. It. And now it's all very, very natural right? because we don't have any other way. I'm going to put this video a little bit and, and stop talking.
Uniform Services University of the Health Sciences, I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. So in any case, so imagine if we can connect, right, with the International Space Station, you know, the power of connectivity, the power of this device. Uh, I think that uh, we have uh, come uh, very, very far. Uh, this is the first time that FaceTime was used. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, as you can see, uh, this is uh, truly a moment that uh, we didn't pay attention to, but now it's, uh, it's part of our, our, our normal lives, right? So uh, this is a proof of concept that we did doing telemedicine with uh, a, a, a remote areas here in Maine using uh, smartphones. You know, it's a clever idea. It's just about using the technology the right way. I really, as a surgeon, feel that a, a, we a, a cannot miss this opportunity, this opportunity to connect, this opportunity to communicate in better ways by a, the smart use of the technology that we have all in our pockets. A, if we think about AI algorithms, artificial intelligence algorithms, if we think about VR, about AR, about XR, right? A, this have brought to us spatial computing. Rather than computing on a screen, a physical screen in front of us, we have the whole space in front of us to be able to compute to uh, do a holograms, a 3D modeling, connecting with avatars, teleconferencing with avatars, learning how to do surgery, doing actual surgery, reading images uh, in 3D, in holograms. All that is possible by the use of uh, XR or, or, or mixed reality, by the use of HoloLens, by the use of Magic Leap, and many other devices that will come. So I think that the future is exciting, and I think the future will uh, certainly take us uh, much farther and allow us uh, to do finally a, a better healthcare, a more human and humane uh, healthcare. It's been, been great to be here and open to questions. Thank you, Doctor. Great talk. Um, it is proven that immersive tech boosts the learner's confidence, but is it also helping in improving the skills and abilities? I, I really think that uh, that is uh, uh, about how we how we use it. Uh, you can certainly uh, improve how you learn. Uh, you can improve how you teach, and that has been proven. So I think that uh, uh, there is no question that, uh, that that is true. Thank you, doctor. Great talk. Uh, AR glasses are helping remote medical consultation, especially in areas like dermatology or post-operative follow-ups. How will this impact the empathy part? I, I really think that uh, if we use the technology the right way, we can connect people better, right? Uh, uh, the, the empathy, it's, it's a big problem. You know, I think that in, in medicine, we are suffering from, from, uh, from uh, uh, what we call a compassion fatigue and uh, what we call empathy fatigue. I think that, uh, that we are distancing ourselves from our patients, uh, human to human. We are actually uh, becoming separated. I think that paradoxically, the technology can, can empower us to connect better. If you have uh, someone uh, and you can connect with that person uh, and go, let's say, virtually to their home, and you can, in a way, uh, 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 communicate with them uh, in, in, for example, the mixed reality, uh, doing having an avatar go to their living room, and you have that avatar talking, discussing, you know, face to face. I think that, that the uh, empathy of that process of communication can be can be better. Uh, it, it depends on how you do it, but I, I really uh, strongly feel that that technology brings us together. Thank you, doctor. Great talk. Developing countries with poor medical machineries and workforce see immersive tech and intelligent connectivity as a beam of hope that can improve access to training and empower trainees to save more lives. How would you add to that? It's hard to add to that. I think that uh, it's really uh, uh, about the, the use of technology. It is a beam of hope uh, as long as uh, we, we have all the players, all the, all the, the pieces uh, uh, aligned. You know, we have to have the access to the technology. We have to have uh, the regulators. We have uh, to have the education of the public, the users, the regulators, in order to create a, a, a sort of a playing field where, where everyone has, uh, has access and where the technology are, are really usable, not usable 
uh, just for uh, for play or entertainment, but be usable for for learning, for teaching, for uh, um, caring for people, for uh, maybe even saving saving a life. Thank you so much, Doctor. It was a pleasure to have you with us. My pleasure, my pleasure, and I'm always open to connect in Twitter or LinkedIn and, and on my website. Uh, so uh, it's uh, been a pleasure to be here. Thank you.